I'm Michelle, and this is Unusual and Freaky Facts. This week, we are going to be talking about food additives. Now, just so we all have a little bit of background information, I'm going to explain just a little bit about the FDA. So, our modern era of food regulation actually began in 1958 when they did a amendment to an earlier act from 1938. This basically set up a pre-market approval for the ingredients in our food and also set the safety standards that we have our food prepared by today. This also included the Delaney Clause, which stated that if anything has been pro any ingredient has been proven to cause cancer to humans or animals, it's banned from our food. Now one of the things most people don't realize is that the FDA is there only to evaluate the safety of the ingredients, not the benefits from these ingredients. Fact number one. So our first additive is castorium. Now castorium is an ingredient that is made from a secretion from the anal gland of beavers. What? That's right. I said a secretion from the anal gland of beavers specifically a North American or European beaver. Now this is actually used as a flavor booster in things like raspberry candies, in ice cream, like strawberry ice cream, and in anything that has an artificial vanilla flavoring like vanilla cupcakes and other baked goods. And actually it has been approved by the FDA to be listed as nothing more than natural flavoring in your food. Number two. So our second food additive today is carmine. Now carmine is made from dried and boiled cochineal beetles. And these are used to make our reds, purples, and pinks. Now they can be listed as artificial color or it could be listed as something as simple as natural red number four. Now these are used in candy, in ice cream, they're used in yogurt, mm. and they're also used in cosmetic products such as lipstick and eyeshadow. It's also been known to cause allergic reaction in people up to and including anaphylactic shock. Fact number three. So our third food additive we're going to talk about today is ammonia. Now the ammonia they put in our food is not the same kind of ammonia that's used in our cleaning products, and it has been in use in our food since 1974. Now the most common use of ammonia is ammonia hydroxide, which is basically an ammonia and water compound. The most recent infamous case of this is the case of the pink slime in the ground beef. Now the way they make the filler for the ground beef is they take all the trimmings and they mush them all together. And since they are the trimmings, they're more susceptible to contamination. So they spray them with ammonia hydroxide, which is ammonia and water, to kill any kind of bacteria like E. coli or salmonella before they put it in with the ground beef. It's also used as a leavening agent in baked goods. And some of the known companies to use it are Kraft Foods, and it's known to be in Wonder Bread, and it's also known to be in the Chef Boyardee raviolis. There's also another kind of ammonia, which is ammonia phosphate, and that one is known to be in the Chips Ahoy cookies. Fact number four. So our fourth food additive today gives a whole new meaning to finding hair in your food. It's called L-cysteine. Now it's used as a dough conditioner in baked goods, and the most common industrial source for it is actually human hair or duck feathers, most commonly from China. What? It can also come from chicken feathers or some petroleum products, but still hair and duck feathers are the most common source. Not kosher, and it's not following the Muslim Hatal rules. You have to be really careful if you follow either of these diets if you're going to be eating any cheap baked goods. Fact number five. So the fifth food additive that we're going to talk about today is also the hardest to say. It is polydimethyl siloxane, also known as PDMS. Now this is used in some foods as an anti-foaming agent. 
Some of the most common uses in food are in McDonald's chicken nuggets and their french fries. It's also known to be in the Wendy's french fries and in Pizza Hut's cheese mix. It's also used in some chewing gums and in a lot of the water-based drinks labeled as sport or electrolyte or energy drinks. Some of the non-food uses for PDMS are in wire coverings in our cars. It's also used in heat resistant tiles. It used to be used in breast implants and probably the most commonly used um, non-food use is in silly putty. Now when it's heated to over 150 degrees it turns into formaldehyde which is known to cause cancer and to irritate the eyes and the throat. So even just a mild exposure to the heated PDMS can cause eye irritation, tearing, redness, throat pain, and other symptoms very similar to this. This has been Unusual and Freaky Facts with Michelle. If you would like any further information on the food additives in today's show, there are links in the description below. You can leave any further suggestions for our future shows in the comments below, and you can like or subscribe. Have an unusual and freaky day.